Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the federal government has approved the medium-term expenditure framework MTEF and fiscal strategy paper for 2025 to 2027 with a proposed budget of 47.9 trillion naira and uh, new borrowings of 9.22 trillion naira. The key financial projections include a $75 oil price benchmark per barrel to 0.06 million barrels per day in oil production and uh, exchange rate of 1,400 naira per dollar and a GDP growth rate of 4.6%. Uh, the MTEF will be transmitted to the National Assembly by November 18 with a 2025 budget covering aggregate, ex uh, aggregate spending of 47 trillion naira and a borrowing of 13.8 trillion naira, which is 3.87% of estimated GDP. The plan includes sustaining market deregulation, reducing production costs in the oil sector, and possible amendments to the Pre Petroleum Industry Act to mitigate fiscal risks, while non-oil revenue, uh, revenue streams show better than expected performances. Uh, to discuss this with us is Mr. Bolahon Oloje a finance expert. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Yeah, let's first of all uh, talk to us like uh, we do not understand much. Uh, what is the medium-term expenditure framework? Uh, what is it all about? Because it's not just a yearly budget. So uh, what does it entail? Okay, um, we have traditionally had the medium-term expenditure framework. Uh, even beyond that, we used to have a much longer plan you have all the vision this and vision that, which were long-term planning. Mm. Then you have medium term, uh, which is typically about three to five years. Then you now have the annual budget, which is uh, the yearly basis one. So medium term uh, expenditure framework is a planning document. It's to say, look, we're not going to be living our life one day at a time. We want to be able to look a bit into the future and plan. And then whatever we plan for that future, we break it down into yearly basis. As we journey along the path, if there is any need to amend anything that we can amend over the life of that medium term. So um, it's essentially uh, the, the, a, a medium term plan um, so that we're not living life one day at a time or one year at a time. It allows us to look into the future and plan. That's, that's what it is all about. Okay. Uh, so, which means this one is uh, going to survive this uh, first tenure of the present administration because it's ending in 2027. These are things that are projected for this time uh, when it gets the good thing. Correct. Yes. Uh, but uh, it seems to, the figures seem to be identical between the budget of, this, of next year and the uh, medium-term uh, expenditure framework of 47 trillion naira you know, on both ends. The medium term, yes. The medium term is just to say, oh, this is what we're going to be doing over the next three years. And then you now take it year by year. So the first year, which is 2025, this is what we're going to do. There will be a 2026, there will be a 2027. And those numbers for the respective years are not going to be the same. But for the first year, which is 2025, that is the 47 trillion naira uh, budget that you're talking about. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go to the key features that we found in that, uh, um, the f key financial projections that we found in the, in the medium-term expenditure framework. Uh, $75 per barrel is what is being projected for. How much is it right now? And what do you think uh, give the confidence to the federal government to think that it will be at $75? Is this realizable? Uh, I, I think it's a bit uh, ambitious, considering um, certain events around the world. But then, it's a budget, and some of these things are not actually 100% predictable. Um, so, for example, in the year that uh, Russia-Ukraine war started, nobody would have budgeted it when it started. But it started all the same, and it took uh, oil price to so an unbelievable uh, level. 
Um, so the threats in the Middle East, uh, no, nobody contemplated uh, October 27, 2023, when, the, I mean, October 7, 2023, when those killings in Israel uh, triggered the um, settlement that we have in the Middle East right now, uh, which also had implication oil prices. So some of the elements of unpredictability that's across the world that could raise is oil price, so it is it's difficult. However, uh, when you also take in context some event that has happened, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the new president, America, uh, he, he doesn't believe in global warming. So all those uh, campaign against fossil fuel, he doesn't believe, in fact, he thinks all those things are, are a scam. Uh, so, and if that is the president of the most powerful and the largest economy in the world, if he believes that, it means that uh, there are two sides to look at this. Number one is the fact that the campaign against fossil fuel might slow down from the perspective of that major player. If it slows down, then it's a plus for a country like Nigeria. The flip side, however, is that because he doesn't believe we should stop fossil fuel, it means it will encourage more drilling in America. So more production will happen from that part of the world. America today is the largest producer of uh, crude oil. And by the time you now talk of drilling in, the, in Alaska and drilling in some other places that other presidents in the past have approached with caution, it means we could have more drilling going on in that place and more oil production. If there is more oil production, uh, there is a possibility that prices might moderate, might, might calm down. So it's a very difficult space to predict with any level of accuracy as we speak. Uh, but we just, which is why we need medium term uh, expenditure framework. Okay? What, so what, happens if the, what happens if the oil prices fall rather than rise? If it falls rather than rise, it means that we will not be able to meet our revenue projections from oil. But over this year, which is another argument, is that, look, revenue from oil is no longer the biggest source of revenue of government today. It is, it is the fiscal side that is, uh, you know, providing the chunk of the revenue. However, oil is still the largest source of our foreign exchange. Now, those, those are two different things. Our total revenue profile, oil is not the largest contributor to that, our, our, to our total revenue. But our foreign exchange earnings, oil is a huge 90%, 85% of the entire foreign exchange earnings of Nigeria. So it will affect seriously our foreign exchange earnings if the price to go down. Of course, it will also affect our total revenue because it constitutes a significant amount, even if it is not uh, the the major part of that revenue profile. Yeah, because I was getting worried when it was said uh, the benchmark for the oil is uh, $75 per barrel. And then, like you use the word ambitious, it's a very ambitious budget, where you say uh, Naira, that is now almost 2,000 Naira to a dollar, you're, you're pegging your, your budget at an estimated price per dollar or Naira per dollar exchange rate of uh, 1,400 Naira. I, I don't know how that will work, but it scares me that we may just be running into a lot of problems more than we anticipated. Okay, it's, it's, it's a fairly complicated thing, I'm, I must admit. Even the exchange rate is ambitious. We have seen what has happened to the exchange rates over the past, uh, 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 since, since uh, the, the uh, what, do you, what, what do you call it now? Since we merge the rates, the various rates converge, you know, we've seen what has happened from 500 to 600 to 900 to, I think it's, it's, it's over 1,700 as we speak yes. today. Yes. So when the federal government projects 1,400 as an extended, it is quite ambitious. However, um, there are things that could support it. One of the things that could support it, for example, is the fact that we are told that our oil production has gone up from the 
1.4, 1.3 million barrels per day neighbor to about 1.8. If that has indeed happened, that is a that is a leap, that is a significant leap in the production of oil that we are experiencing. And it could support the exchange. Don't forget what I mentioned in my earlier, earlier comment that the largest source of our foreign exchange journey is crude oil. This is from oil. So whatever will increase the production of oil will also increase our capacity to earn foreign exchange. If this foreign exchange supply increases, then we have a chance that our, our exchange rate will also moderate uh, you know, and, and it will improve significantly if that happens. The other part, still from the oil sector, that will help is the issue of refining. It has been established that the amount we use to import refined product is a chunk of the FX demand uh, uh, through the official window in, in Nigeria. So if we are able to maximize the reality that we now have uh, uh, a, a refining in country, and we don't have to spend all those dollars importing refined product. If per, 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 per chance we're also able to get more refining working, like the, the government refining coming to that place, or probably some other private sector operators also start to produce in significant quantities, then our capacity to save foreign exchange will improve. Our capacity to earn foreign exchange will also improve, and we will be able to tame the, the exchange rates that has run amok or not. Um, these are all possibilities. But like I said, it's a complex, complex space. And for now, uh, it could be said that 1,400 exchange rate is an ambitious. I, I have very few concerns about that. Uh, I was asking the other guests uh, before now, uh, what parameters did they use? How accurate is the data of 1.8 million barrels per day? In fact, they say they are targeting uh, 2 uh, million barrels per day. Uh, maybe by December or just a little after December, they are targeting 2 million barrels per day when they now have 1.8 barrels per day. I was asking, is the 1.8 barrels before or after the supposed theft that has been going on? Is it uh, before or after the ones we are hearing uh, that um, uh, some people high up in government have been allotted some barrels of, of oil on a daily basis that leaves our shores? What is the percentage of these 1.8 million barrels that is really accounted for in Nigeria? But apart from that, you have talked about Dangote refinery be, being in-country refinery that will help us in uh, the, the import, import that was costing us so much. It will now help us. But we've been told by NNPC, in fact, it was on the headlines today, that importation has not, has not stopped even though they came out the other day and said they had stopped importation, they are now going to be lifting from Dangote and all that. But they are saying today, as of today, that the importation has not stopped. So all these projections with these realities on ground, how do you think they are realizable? Can you hear me, Mr. Olojede? We seem to be having some technical problems with him. Uh, I do hope that he can rejoin us to uh, wrap up on this. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, the fact that um, the medium-term expenditure framework is being presented to the National Assembly alongside uh, the budget 2025. We're looking at 47 trillion naira. And we're looking at how realizable all these will be because the projections in that budget are very, using the words of Mr. Olojede, uh, ambitious, very, very ambitious. The barrel of oil is projected to, to sell for $75. And then the exchange rate is placed at 1,400. Right now, the exchange rate is 1,700 and I think 35 Naira. Okay, maybe on the official window they will say uh, 1,650 uh, or thereabouts, but it is above 1,006. And now they're talking of 1,004. Are there, are there indications that the dollar to the Naira 
uh, will come down. Are there those indications or not? Mr. Lojede, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, the question I asked before we had that interruption uh, was that at this moment, the NNPCL is still saying that importation has not uh, ended, even when you were saying that uh, we have some kind of uh, relief when, because we have Dangote refinery here. So Dangote refinery here, but importation is still going on, which means there's still that pressure on the Naira against the dollar and all that. So I'm just, I'm just curious how it's going to work. I, I think it's an internal problem that should be solved out, solved at the highest level of decision making in this culture. On one side, uh, Dangote says, I can produce all that you need in this country, probably even more. Hmm. Um, on the other side, NMPC is saying, uh, NMPC appears to be interested in importation. And it has justified its position by saying, look, I want, I, uh, you know, it, it is for deregulation. We want price competition. That is for competition that, you know, all those importation will continue to. Uh, to happen. Now, questions will include things like, why should it be cheaper to bring a product from Kazakhstan to Nigeria than when it is produced in Nigeria by, what, by what, what, a, 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 a modern and very recent large-scale refinery in Nigeria? Number two, it If that refinery is already getting all that arrangement is performing to pass some crude, um, you know, at a narrow rate, is it happening? We don't know to what extent. But what is sure is that there are certain things that we're not being told. And I believe that at the highest level of decision making, we can smoothen this thing out and make it work for us. I, will, I have a favorite example, and I will, I will quote it. My favorite example is to say, um, less than three months ago, NMPC had said, oh, this Dangote refinery was 45% complete. Mm. 45. And then a month after it made that statement, the same NMPC lined up his own trucks to go and load products at that same NMPC, at that same Dangote that was said to be 45% complete, that was said to be producing very bad fuel. That is what was said on, on, on live television mm. by NMPC. You know, so it shows that some of the things that are playing out are more than meets the eyes. And the decision makers, especially uh, left to me, I will put this on the desk of the president, say, look, things are not particularly as they're supposed to be. Help to sort this out. If you sort this out, Nigerians will know exactly what is going on and, and will know what to expect. As it is today, we don't have full information about the exact situation of things among I mean, between those parties, NMPC and that person. Well, it seems the president is interested. He has a vested interest in NNPC, and not just because uh, of anything, but because he has not done any rejigging in NNPC. He seems to be very comfortable, and whatever it is, seems to be paying off for him, or because it's not for the country. I can't say it's for the country, and I don't know why the, uh, the president has not made any any significant move on NNPC. And now this borrowing is going to happen. So much money that is going to be borrowed even when fuel subsidy has been removed. And things are just confusing, especially for some of us that may not have the financial mind that some of you will have and see some advantages and disadvantages. We just want food on our tables. We just know that NNPC or the oil sector is what is generating money for our country and we need uh, a, a new lease of life. We need some, some kind of relief uh, to the way things are happening right now. And we are really, really suffering. I do hope we'll get it right with this administration. I was hoping that when Tinobu comes, he will, he will be thinking about legacies more than just having a name that I became a president. But I, I, I don't seem to find out that much. Well, if you have a final word, just say it very briefly, sir, uh, because we are wrapping up. Uh, our time is up. In reality, if our production has indeed revved up to 1.8 million barrels per day, it is kudos to NMPC on that rate. We will get validation mm. from OPEC about the actual numbers uh, very soon. 
because OPEC will also tell you how much we are putting. Okay. So we'll, we'll get to know. All right. Well, let's get to know that. would like to thank you, Mr. Bola Olojide, for coming on the program this morning. It's always a pleasure having you, and we're wishing you a wonderful weekend. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Mr. Bola Honolujide is a, a finance expert and was talking to us about the medium-term expenditure framework that has been uh, presented to the National Assembly or is being presented to the National Assembly alongside the budget for 2025. And that is the last thing we're doing on the show for this week because we're wrapping up now and then we're hoping to reconnect with you on Monday, same time, uh, same station. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.